The following episode of the Maui Chamber of Commerce's Business Matters Radio Show was originally broadcast on October 26, 2021. The following is a paid program and does not necessarily reflect the opinions of the staff or management of Visionary Related Entertainment. Aloha Maui and welcome to the Maui Chamber of Commerce's Business Matters Radio Show, sponsored by Mokulele Airlines. I'm your host, Pamela Tumpa, President of the Maui Chamber of Commerce, and today we're going to talk about Mokulele Airlines, about their experiences on reopening and continuing to operate, cancellations due to Governor's message, and any news and updates as we gear up for the holidays. We're going to speak with the executive director of A3H, which is an activities association, on experiences their industry has faced since COVID, and speak with a second-generation flooring installer who's been working in the trade from a young age and now owns his own company, as well as talk about this Saturday's virtual Made in Maui County Festival. You can sign up now at MadeInMauiCountyFestival.com. But let's begin this morning with Keith Sisson, the Chief of Staff of Mokulele Airlines. Keith is also the co-founder of Southern Airways in 2013. Keith was part of the team that led the acquisition effort of Mokulele in 2019, and Keith oversaw the renovation and modernization efforts of the Kahului Commuter Terminal, terminal, which is now the busiest commuter terminal in the United States, and beautiful, I might add, if you haven't seen it. Mokulele Airlines now offers over 120 daily flights in Hawaii, and since becoming the only airline for the islands of Molokai and Lanai has made a commitment to never having a sold-out flight day. Keith lives in Kona with his three-year-old son, Jack, and his wife, who is a local artist, Ashley Sisson. So good morning and aloha, Keith. How are you today? Good morning and aloha. I am doing fine. It is a beautiful day on the Big Island. Great to be talking to you there in Maui. Oh, it's a beautiful day here, too, and so glad to hear that the weather is gorgeous in Kona as well. So let's talk about, you know, the experience since reopening, how you've been continuing to operate, and and how COVID has affected, if if it has affected, your normal way of doing business. Well, I think COVID has affected everybody's (laughs) normal way of doing business, and uh, what what is interesting, though, is the way that a lot of the... uh, protocols that we put in place due to COVID are likely to stand. Uh, you know, not the, yeah. the annoying ones that we all know about. Uh, you know, eventually the mask mandates will go away, uh, both the federal mask mandates for uh, for being in airports and on aircraft and also the state mandates. Uh, you know, we, we know those will eventually subside. But the, the long-term effects of what we've seen through COVID, uh, uh, of how we sanitize aircraft, uh, for yes. example, that's something that's going to be long-lasting uh, and permanent in the, um, in, in the aviation community. We, we have seen that, you know, the way that things were done in the past, uh, you know, these were things that have been done since the Wright brothers took off the first flight. So <laughs> now, now, you know, I, I don't see any airline uh, not doing the sanit- uh, sanit- uh, sanit- uh, sanitation process that they're uh, that they're doing uh, due to COVID protocols. I think those are going to stay forever, uh, just for general health benefits and safety benefits going forward. Uh, not related to COVID, but related to other uh, you know types of bacteria that could be uh, airborne and and living on surfaces. I, I think those are going to stay forever, and uh, I think that's probably a good thing. Yeah, new best practice as we learn yeah, forward. Absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah, everybody's in the habit. Everybody is right now, all of the employees, uh, not just at, at our airline, but every airline, they're, they're in the habit now of doing this, and I don't see that ever changing. That's awesome. And, you know, now that you've seen these changes and, and we've, you know, been going through this process and we've had stricter mandates and, and you know, we've seen the, the rise of the Delta variant and now, thankfully, we're seeing the numbers go down. But can you share a little bit with our audience about, you know, what you experienced? I know that in many of our industries there was a, a big shakedown <laughs> after the governor made his announcement that, 
you know, he was encouraging people not to come at this time. We know why he was doing it with the rising Delta variants and case counts. Um, but, you know, we did see a lot of impact in various industries, and many chamber members shared some of the, the devastating cancellations they saw. How did things go from Okalele Airlines? Well, it was very interesting, and, and I really do not have any uh, hard data to point to, but it was interesting that the governor's announcement uh, when he first uh, you know, said that also coincided with the booking window for what we would normally have as our slowest part of the year, that shoulder season right. of uh, August and September, early October. So you know, people were making those, those travel plans uh, right around the time when the governor's announcement uh, came out in uh, midsummer. And uh, we, we expected to see a, uh, a decrease in a lot of the people that we move on the aircraft uh, that are visitors from the mainland, uh, as we always do during that time. Uh, so actually, the, uh, if you look at the, the booking curve, everything pretty much stayed about where we expected it to be, regardless of that announcement. So uh, I'm thankful that that announcement did not happen in early summer or late spring, uh, because that definitely would have had a devastating effect on the uh, on the summer travel that was uh, that was pre-booked. But I, I do think that uh, we definitely saw a, a decrease. But I'm not saying that that decrease was directly associated with the governor's mandate. Uh, a lot of it was was circumstantially seasonal anyway. Correct, and yeah, and that's good to hear because. We have been hearing that as well. I mean, the timing was just before the shoulder period. Um, many of our businesses were tracking what the messages were, which was, you know, if, if they said, you know, it's it's um, rising case counts, you know, that would be one thing that they would kind of tick off. If if it was specifically the governor's message, they would tick that off. And then, as as you point out, the shoulder period is is always with us every year. <laughs> so, you know, not not related to the specific messaging. That's just the way the market trends go. But I'm glad to hear that that it wasn't a significant impact for you. Um, it, it, it was it, it it was not a significant impact. Uh, of course, uh, the governor has become very good at making national news uh, yes. whenever he he chooses to. Uh, so just as that made national news uh, back in uh, the the midsummer when that announcement was made, just a few weeks ago it was national news when the governor uh, went out and said, "Hey, come on back to Hawaii. We are open," uh, and that that was uh, very helpful. And we're hoping that that will uh, be directly reflected with the uh, forward bookings going into the holiday season. We certainly hope so as well. Uh, we're, we're working really hard to see that, and, and we're really excited about, you know, moving forward. Everybody wants to move forward, and uh, glad that the governor made that announcement, glad that it's getting the national attention as well. And I think it's really incumbent upon all of us to, you know, change um, the messaging and social media again, support the governor in that message, support the businesses, and support, you know, reopening and welcoming our guests back. This is the time when they start to now, November and December is a great time when they start coming back. Let's make sure our messaging is positive and welcome them as we teach them about our islands and, uh, you know, our sustainability efforts and our culture. And so we want to encourage everybody to do that. Yeah, and, and the timing of the, the governor's message was very uh uh, was was very much relatable to the time when people do make their travel plans to make those uh, trips across the ocean for family vacations. So, uh, you know, the the people that are making those uh, holiday travel plans, you know, th- those those typically are made in September, October, um, you know, early November. So uh, we we are hoping that there is going to be a positive effect on that. Of course, we also are uh, watching the. Uh, travel trends and the uh, statistics that are provided to us from the uh, Hawaii uh, Convention of Visitors Bureau. Uh, we do know that uh, you know, here in the last year that mainland traffic is actually over the 2019 levels and quite significantly over when you specifically look at uh, from the western U.S. and uh, you know just slightly above 2019 levels when you look at the eastern U.S. But one thing that we are really missing here is the international travel. Uh, you know, we're down 98% from almost every international market into the state of Hawaii. And as uh, the COVID protocols start lifting in the, the, the countries where the outbound travel would originate, uh, we hope to see that those numbers will, will increase. Of course, right now we have 
airlines that used to have nonstop service into um, uh, in, into the state that are not even operating uh, right now across the uh, across the Pacific to to international community international uh, communities and gateways. So, for example, we have um, you know a, a nominal number of Japanese visitors right now to the island, and the the path for the Japanese visitor to get to the island would be to travel to the mainland U.S. and make the connection over San Francisco or Los Angeles, for example. So it's not very easy for for our uh, for our visitors that are in the um, in, in Asia to make it to Hawaii right now, and certainly very difficult for people in the South Pacific to get into Hawaii right now. So we're down about 98, 99% of the 2019 numbers for international travelers. And when you look at the, uh, the main tourism destinations, places like um, Lanai for the high-end traveler or Kapalua or Wailea, uh, you know, those those numbers definitely impact those communities. And, uh, you know, considering we are the airline that helps people get to Lanai or Kapalua, uh, we are expecting to see uh, in the following year, uh, sometime in calendar year 2022, those numbers start to bounce back rather quickly. We are certainly looking forward to that. And, you know, and again, I want to mention that during COVID times, you know, you are the airline also who continue to step up and fly to Molokai and Lanai. And that is so important and was such uh, an amazing opportunity for the islands to have you fly there because, you know, we were in trouble. <laughs> you know, it was a crisis situation, and we appreciate that Mokalele Airlines was there and was able to serve those islands and continue to do so. Well, we 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 definitely uh, attempted to do the best. We we did the best we could. We we didn't always uh, perform at the level that we hold ourselves to be um, to do our standards, uh, and that was just simply because the scale up was so fast. To, uh, to reopen the economy and get people traveling again that it took us a while to scale up. Uh, we've brought on five additional aircraft since this time six months ago. We have a, uh, a new uh, Cessna Grand Caravan that will be making its inaugural trip across the ocean uh, this month uh, to help backfill some of the demand for the islands of Molokai and Lanai. And we're very excited to bring larger aircraft also uh, that will happen this winter. Uh, we are scaling up our Saab 340 operation. We're going to have two 30-seat Saab 330s, uh, 340s that will be coming into the state of Hawaii this winter, and that will be running scheduled service uh, in the peak times from Honolulu to Molokai and Honolulu to Lanai. And also that will be the aircraft that we're going to use to move a lot of the uh, high school sports teams around as uh, uh-huh. high school sports are starting to be uh, become uh, uh, more. Um, there, there's more games being played. There's more movements of the high school kids, and uh, certainly we want to get those um, those basketball players and football players moved to their games uh, that are that are happening off island. And uh, the larger aircraft are absolutely going to help with that. That is going to be phenomenal. Yes, we want sports back, <laughs> and the kids are eager to play. So it's great that you are there and helping out to get them between the islands and get them to those different games. Uh, phenomenal, really phenomenal. And, uh, you know, our holiday season is upon us. So with, with the new aircraft you're bringing in, what are you expecting this holiday season? Well, uh, this summer was incredibly busy, and while we did have the uh, – the commitment to never having a, a sold-out day for flights that are going to those uh, underserved islands of, uh, of Molokai and Lanai. We were not always able to meet that goal just because of the demand. I mean, sometimes we were running flights well into the evening hours to make sure that everybody had the opportunity to get to where they needed to go. Uh, we are very much well uh, better suited for that now that we have more aircraft, more pilots available and uh, we're expecting the the Christmas travel season, the holiday travel season, even uh, you know through the winter, to be even busier than what the summer was. Uh, the difference is that now we have the uh, we've had enough time and opportunity to scale up the operation to accommodate those demands. So with that, with the addition of the uh, Cessna Grand Caravans, the nine seat planes that we'll be adding to the fleet, and we can add up to ten or twelve flights a day just with one aircraft, and that is, wow. uh, that's a, a huge game changer, and, and we've added, uh, uh, you know, five since, uh, and going on six since the 
summer. Uh, so that will definitely help us meet that demand. We're expecting that demand to exceed what, what it was in the, su- in the uh, summer. Uh, and then, of course, with the larger aircraft, that's going to be um, a, a game changer for the, the communities. Uh, that's also going to be an aircraft that is going to be easier to board for people that have limited mobility. Uh, so that is something that is going to be very uh, beneficial to the, the, the older population of those islands and the people that have uh, uh, you know, some limited mobility. The, the larger aircraft are going to be, um, you know, a, a very nice accommodation, and uh, it'll actually be a, a little bit better than the ATR aircraft that Ohana was able to operate, even though it's a smaller aircraft by seat count. It's a wider aircraft, and uh, there's more room to be uh, for mobility within the aircraft. So you have more, more personal space on this plane than you would have on an ATR once you are uh, navigating to your seat and once you're in your seat. So we're very excited about that. The uh, the aircraft are going uh, under a complete uh, renovation before they are entering the state. So these are going to be flagship-worthy aircraft. Um, you know, they're, they're going to be uh, – they're going to they're gonna shine like a new penny. Um, <laughs> and that is, that is something we're very excited about, as we are also excited about – renovating the current Mokalele fleet. Uh, we have been uh, rotating all of our interiors through uh, an upholstery shop in Honolulu, and so far we have uh, updated the interiors of 25% of the Mokalele fleet, and throughout the year 2022 we should have that process completed, and we wow. have uh, slots booked with, uh, with uh, paint shops to get the uh, the exterior of the aircraft uh, refreshed and we we think that uh, people are going to start seeing and noticing all of the uh, capital improvements that we've made in the aircraft uh, if they haven't already they're certainly going to see it when the the new paint um, you know gets on these aircraft and everything starts to really look new again um, you know look we've we've been operating uh, you know through covid with um, with kind of a, a skeleton crew and uh, um, you know, a kind of a, a limited number of aircraft, and we scaled up very, very quickly to be able to meet the demand. We're now able to do that, and as the demand increases, we'll be able to meet the further demand, and we'll be able to do it with aircraft that that look very, very nice as we move these things through a, uh, a complete overhaul and facelift and uh, really updated the, uh, the interiors of each uh, and, and working through that process. Well, I, that's really exciting. I can't wait to see all the new aircraft. <laughs> you know, it, it, there is nothing like a refresh like that. And, and of course, you started with um, the Kahului Terminal, which is, is beautiful. And I, I think, again, every time somebody sees a refresh, it sparks new energy and enthusiasm. And it's exciting to hear about the bigger planes and how wide they are and that you've got more room because I know that that's something, you know, I, I'm a, I love small aircraft. I, my parents were pilots. We they had a little Cessna when I grew up, so I love to get on small aircraft. But I do hear people say, you know, they, they feel sometimes maybe uncomfortable and how, to, you know, getting on a craft like that. So I think that you've opened up a new world for them. Well, we, we hope so. These are going to be very comfortable aircraft to, um, to, to be a passenger on. Uh, the the flight time is going to be a little uh, a little shorter, although uh, so much of the flight time between Honolulu and Molokai is spent on the runway taxiing at Honolulu, so that right. time will stay about the same. Uh, but but this this will be uh, really great for uh, for the islands and the, the neighbor island connectivity. We did have the opportunity to work with Hawaiian Airlines and Empire, which was the operator of the Ohana. Uh, flights by Hawaiian. We had the opportunity to work with them and acquire all of their ground service equipment. Those are things like um, the generators for the aircraft and the air stairs and the ramps. So we have all of that equipment that Ohana had, uh, you know, in place on those islands that is now in our possession, and we're in the process of um, uh, inspecting all of that equipment and uh, doing some upgrades and. Uh, uh, repairs and refresh on that so that when the aircraft arrive, we have all of the equipment needed for uh, the people to uh, to take advantage of those larger planes. And that's something we're we're very excited about. That's uh, that, that's something that Mokalele, uh, throughout its 27-year history, has had larger aircraft at different times, um, but not in the, the recent history. This is the first time in well over a decade that we're going to see larger aircraft like that, uh, you know, fly in the Mokalele family. 
that is truly tremendous. I think that's awesome. And again, right in time, you know, with this is we always talk about the visitors, but the holidays are upon us, and this is our time to fly and go from island to island and see family and friends around the holiday season. So it's it's a spectacular thing that you've been doing and continue to do to service our, our entire state and, of course, our Maui County community. Well, and, and our focus has always been on the, the local population. Uh, it's, it's nice to have people, uh, visitors on the aircraft, of course, uh, but they're, they come to town, they, they spend their money, and they leave, um, and that's a, that's a great thing. We, we, we're very thankful for that business, and, uh, and we welcome that. But we, we have always made our core business uh, being able to connect people to the neighbor islands. And, um, you know, there's so many people that, that use Mokalele on a, on a daily basis even uh, to commute to work or to commute to doctor's appointments. And just a, a few uh, months ago, we did an impromptu survey on a Monday morning, and our first 17 passengers of the day that were going from Molokai to Honolulu were going for medical appointments. That puts a large responsibility on the airline and one that we don't take lightly. Uh, we know how important these these movements can be. Um, so having the extra air cla- uh, aircraft, the larger aircraft, the extra crew, to make sure that we can accommodate those, that responsibility uh, you know that that's very important to us, and uh, we're we always uh, have you know had the idea that we're going to rise to the challenge, and uh, we're certainly putting things in place right now to make sure that people that have that essential travel, you know, whether they choose to uh, you know live on Molokai and work in either Maui or or Honolulu, we're going to have the ability to get you there on time, and uh, it, and uh, especially for the people that have those essential medical appointments having this extra aircraft and being able to scale up the crew to the way that we have. We put, uh, we put almost 180 pilots through training in the last 12 months. So, oh, wow. I mean, we're, we're really, uh, really ramping up the operation. We are so excited. Keith, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you to you and Mokalili Airlines for all you do in our community and for sponsoring the show. We truly appreciate you. You are great community partners, and we look forward to seeing the amazing refresh, the bigger planes, and continuing to enjoy the awesome service that you offer. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to sponsor this program, and thank you for mentioning the uh, the Kahului Terminal a couple of times and the renovation and facelift that we did there. It's absolutely beautiful. I'm very, very proud of it. We are taking that same concept to the island of Molokai next, and Hopefully, before the end of this year, we'll have a, a complete refresh on the airport terminal on that island uh, to look very similar to what we've had, uh, what we did in Kahului. So, always improvements, and uh, thankful for the support of the, the local political leaders that are allowing us to, to make these improvements for the people. We, can't, we, we all need to do it together, and so, yes, it's, we want to thank our government officials for helping us move forward and helping Mokalili Airlines. Well, you have a beautiful day. Thank you so much for having us on. Our pleasure. Thank you for being on. Aloha, Keith. Mokalele Airlines operates the largest commuter airline hub in the country, right here in Kahului. Fly Mokalele from Kahului to Molokai, Manai, Hana, Waimea, Tona, and now Hilo. Mokalele also operates the only flights between Kapalua and Honolulu. There is never a middle seat on Mokulele, and every seat has a window and aisle. Visit MokuleleAirlines.com and take your next flight from the newly renovated Mokulele Terminal. And we are back. If you're just tuning in, this is Business Matters, brought to you by the Maui Chamber of Commerce. I just want to make a quick plug because this is the holiday season and a time for giving. And one of the ways that you can help right now for a group in need is to donate any old computers or laptops or iPads that you may have uh, because we have people who are working very hard to train those who are wanting to upgrade their skills who need digital literacy. It's a project through the Broadband Hui, and they're helping to train people who just don't have the computer skills right now want to get back into the workforce, maybe upgrade their skills to get into better paying jobs, for seniors who want to connect with family and friends, for those who might need some medical attention or medical monitoring, which can be done through the computer, and uh, others who are interested in distance learning programs. 
So if you have an old computer, laptop, iPad that you're not using, it's just sitting somewhere in your house or your garage, please pull it out. Please contact us at the Maui Chamber of Commerce. We're working with the Broadband Hui and a program where the state is helping to refurbish those computers. They wipe everything clean. They upgrade the memory. Uh, and then they get them in the hands of people in need. It's a great way to give this holiday season of something that you're probably not even using. And any donation is greatly appreciated. So you can call 244-0081 to make a contribution. Uh, we also want to share about the upcoming Made in Maui County Festival. We are on our eighth year and very excited to be holding the festival. The big festival day is this Saturday. You've been hearing it on this station as well as across our community. We want to encourage everybody to shop this Saturday from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. There's going to be some great prize giveaways, a phenomenal uh, midday around noon, a musical concert that you can enjoy from local musicians. But we're really excited to feature the amazing products of our local manufacturers who are passionate about what they make through local hands and hearts, they are creating awesome products for all of us to enjoy. And, you know, this holiday season, this is a great way to find great treasures for your friends and family, great gifts. Also find things that you might want to enjoy year-round. But shop local this holiday season. You know, this is where when we support our local vendors and our manufacturers and small businesses, that money recycles in our community over and over again. And this is a great way to do that online and be a tremendous support. So we want to encourage everybody to do that. If you are a wholesale buyer or distributor, we have a preview for you uh, from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Friday. That's the Wholesale and Distributors Buyer's Preview. And that is followed by a 4 to 5 p.m. networking session. So we want to encourage you to register online as well. So if you're a wholesale buyer and distributor or you're somebody who's wanting to shop local and support some of our uh, local manufacturing companies, please just go to MadeInMauiCountyFestival.com. That's MadeInMauiCountyFestival.com for more information. We've got a lot of great things available for you, over 50 vendors, and um, just a great time to shop and experience all that we have to offer. What's happening now is, and we're very excited about it, is we wanted to do the big Festival Day Live, and, and some people are asking, why can Honolulu do the Made in Hawaii Festival and we can't do the Made in Maui County Festival Live? And, you know, it comes down to capacity and some of the issues that, um, you know, we've been facing with COVID, watching numbers go up, watching numbers go down, trying to work with government officials, trying to work with, you know, the medical institutions, understanding where things are at. And, you know, Oahu has a greater capacity over there. So they've got many hospitals where we have one. We know it's the holiday season. So in in uh, in line with the messaging that we were hearing and the cautionary things that we had to look at and you know, we had measures in place to go either way and provide, you know, safety and security measures either way. But, um, you know, this year it just became very clear when the messaging came down a few weeks ago that, you know, we were still not at that reopening point. Then we needed to say, okay, we just can't wait till the last minute. We have to get out. We have to start marketing this festival. We are also marketing the festival not just nationally but internationally and are very excited to continue to do that. We did that last year with the virtual festival, and we had a lot of buyers come in uh, internationally, and of course a lot of buyers statewide and nationally as well. And we want to continue to build on that, because the goal is that when we come back live next year, that is our big plan, next year um, as we get past the Delta variant and, and go through this wave and, and hope that we don't see another variant come through, but we'll all be better prepared, and then we'll do not just a live festival, but a live and virtual. So what we've been building will continue, but the goal is, you know, we know everybody wants to shop in person. We want to shop in person. And so um, it's it's an exciting time to 
you know, still be able to shop. We will get back to shopping in person. And our vendors are eager to get back to shopping in person. But for those who are there, we encourage you to shop with them now. And just, uh, you know, prepare for the holiday season. And then we're going to give you some great experiences. And it's going to be a fun day. So if you want to register, again, just go to madeinmauicountyfestival.com. And we'll have just a spectacular event again this year. As I'm talking to you, I'm, I'm also... Looking at my phone as our next next guest, I'm seeing messages that our next guest is uh, not yet in at the moment. So we're trying to call her as we don't have her yet online. But we have uh, Tony Marie Davis, who's going to join us from uh, A3H, which is the Activities Association. And she's been working with so many activity companies as we go through these COVID times, as we've looked at mandates, as they've had to implement safety measures, excuse me, safety measures, as they've had to pull back numbers so they could do social distancing, um, as they've worked through different messaging that has gone out, that has led people to cancel activities. Tony's been on the front lines uh, working with these companies, as have we for our chamber members as well, trying to keep them alive, keep these businesses operating and moving forward. And so we're excited to have her join us very shortly uh, on this front and uh, continue to hear updates about what's going on in this industry. And then we will be following Tony with a great gentleman from Dave Denhauer, who is the owner of Lane's Carpet. And he's going to talk about his industry and how he has moved up in that industry to now own his own business. So it's very exciting times right now. There's so many things that have been going on at the Maui Chamber of Commerce. You know, we were thrilled to be partnering with the county when COVID hit and we saw the devastation. We were able to work with the administration, Mayor Victorino and his team immediately came forward and we worked on a micro-business enterprise loan program. And that was a very exciting time where we could start getting help to the micro-businesses who truly needed it. And then, of course, that was followed by the federal government programs, which was a great help. And businesses saw the PPP loans and the EIDL loans, and they were able to get some additional help. But as we know, those programs are ended and people are starting to look at their repayment or their PPP relief, and they've been getting that for a while now. And then we saw county programs uh, that the administration was able to do with those funds. And so we were able to help with the farm and ranch program to help farmers and ranchers. We were able to do a commercial mortgage and rent relief program which help many businesses. And as we're moving forward, of course, we're we're still looking at what's going on at the federal government level. There's more money coming down. But, um, you know, you're seeing a lot of talk at the national level about, you know, getting getting the bill passed that authorizes the upcoming money. So these are things that are kind of works in progress. People ask us every day, is, is there still relief coming? When might that relief come? And we're just finding now that, you know, it, it's a lot of the money and a lot of the new efforts to move us forward are tied up within that uh, additional federal relief and bill to, you know, you hear a lot about the infrastructure bill, which is a great part of it, but there's additional money for broadband, there's additional money for helping our communities. But we're just waiting to see what that's going to look like, when it's going to come down, and when it's going to be available. So know that we're still working on relief at the Maui Chamber of Commerce. There's a lot of things happening there. And, you know, a lot of what we've been doing as well is helping our members stay up to speed on the mandates, when things, you know, uh, have pulled back, when things are reopening, best practices. Uh, We've been trying to educate our members on training opportunities, Regardless of where the training opportunities are, if they're low cost or no cost, we're trying to promote ways that people can get needed training in a cost-effective way. And the other thing that we're working on now is, you know, it's a different time with employees who have been off from work for long periods. Many are not, um, you know, many of them are not uh, 
uh, wanting to necessarily go back to work in the same way. They might want to work from home now or they might want to have reduced hours or, you know, with things changing in education, parents are saying, you know, they maybe need more time to spend with their children. So there's a lot of things happening in terms of the workforce right now as well. Um, and businesses are looking at ways to accommodate in new ways that they've, you know, had never had to accommodate before, but um, now they've been working to you know, change some of the ways that they their business runs to help address some of the employee needs and, and look revisit work schedules and make things work. So we're working on that front as well to give them tips and best practices and showcase new opportunities to strengthen that employee-employer relationship. But I am just getting a notice that Tony is on hold now. So we've got Tony Davis. Uh, so I'd like to just take a moment to welcome Tony with the she is the executive director of the Activities and Attractions Association of Hawaii, known as A three H. Good morning, Tony, and welcome to the show. Aloha, Keha Keka Oh goodness, now I'm gonna mess it up. Keka Hasiaka. <laughs> Good morning, Pam. Hi, thanks for having me. You're welcome. Well, we're we're Take gonna up. we're gonna have Take to do a condensed yaka. version if yes. you don't mind. But I I would still love to hear you talk about some of the things that are going on with the commercial boats and guided uh, van oh, tours. Oh, sure. Tell us no, a it's bit about fabulous what news with this last uh, proclamation from the mayor. Is he left off boats? He actually didn't address boats like he did with the uh, commercial tours, which he allowed to open up to 100% capacity, which is wonderful. It's just such a nice feeling now. I know with trick-or-treat, I don't know if many people had trick-or-treaters come to their door, but it was so nice to feel normal again a little bit. Um, Absolutely. So it's nice to feel that in the industry as well. The biggest uh, challenge right now for, for the businesses in the tourism industry is staffing. It is really... People are still, even though some of them will have no restrictions, they're limited because of they just don't have the staff. Um, it's very um, interesting what happened with the commercial boats, too, because um, what the mayor did was they left off commercial boats. They actually didn't address it like they did with the um, guided commercial tours. So there's a little bit of a ambiguity there with the uh Department of Land and Natural Resources, Division of Boating, uh, that it's not clear. <laughs> so the mayor needs to, the mayor's office really needs to make that clear to the state, um, even though in some ways, you know, the jurisdiction really lies in the federal government with the U.S. Coast Guard because all the boats here are federally documented, right? It's, it's it, you know, it's one of those challenges of COVID, not knowing who, what, or where has the jurisdiction over it, but everybody wants to be a good neighbor and good community supporter and do the right thing. Um, we've all been trying to do that. And it's um, <clears throat> there's some things that are happening that are um, against the grain. We are, there's some small, very vocal community groups that are very anti-tourism, and it's just um, it's, it's a little uh, unsettling, and it seems counterculture to the Aloha spirit. Um, we really are uh, on this in this place, and if you follow George uh, um, Kanahele's teachings of hospitality and ho'okipa, it's 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 our duty as people who live here to um, guard this place, protect this place, and to host and share that spirit with people that visit. That's part of what we're supposed to be doing. And granted, we haven't been doing the best job at management, which HDA has really shifted um, their whole focus now on regenerative tourism, not sustainable, but regenerative, which is leaving the place better than how you found it, is just really exciting. And we need to get things in place. There's been a lot of, um, like the DMAPs. I think, Pam, you're in the DMAP, weren't you? I now? was, yes. It was a great yeah, program. No, there's some really, you know, high thinking, um, not short-sighted stuff. And it really would be great if our community could get in on that. There's so many things, you know, that I think – um, spread us out to, you know, diversifying our economy I think is smart, but it, it really doesn't compete. I don't care what you're doing. Um, tourism as an economic engine is so exemplary. It is in essence a um, 
export business because people make money in a different economy. They come here and inject that money in this economy. And I don't mean to focus just on the money, but it's just the economics of it are brilliant. And the fact that Hawaii has is so well branded and HBCB has done such an excellent job at making this a um, a high end experience, a special experience with our unique Hawaiian culture. We just have this this beautiful situation that we need to preserve and protect and be regenerative with. But it is a economic engine like no other, and um, we all should see that and embrace it. And there are things that are going on right now where we're trying to um, have those that work in the industry have better wages, um, have benefits, be employees, and um, try to hold up those companies that are doing those kinds of things. So it's, it's a whole shift that's taking place, and it's, it's all for the better. I can see it for, for this place, for the people that live here, and... Um, I guess, uh, you know, when you have problems, which is I'm talking about COVID, <laughs> right, the best thing to do is accept that and be grateful and look for the silver linings of it. And there's lots of silver linings that have come out of COVID. And that's, that's another thing that separates our community, the whole vaccinated, not vaccinated. You know, that's not, that's not culturally aligned. We're an accepting culture. But anyway... Hi. <laughs> <laughs> there has been a lot on that. Thank you, Tony. And and uh, can you talk about this the hot topic of what's going on at Malo Wharf and your thoughts about the petition that is being filed um, with the DLNR? Well, well, the good news is um, it's just part of that. You know, the anti-tourism. Um, these are operators. That, okay, first off, the petition has a lot of good points. Malo is a mess. I don't know if anybody's been down there <laughs> tried to go to the bathroom. I mean, since the petition and since all the uh, talking about the degradation of the place, that at least the bathroom doors have been fixed. <laughs> but they're still graffiti. There's no soap. The sink doesn't work. They're just it's, – it's wrong. It's like we're in a third-world country here in, in our public bathrooms. And there's just – you know, the dumpster still hasn't been brought back. There's still homeless issues there and – you know, this is a place that um, the commercial operators that are running out of there are um, have been doing so for decades, some of them over 40 years. Um, and they've been living in harmony with the trailer boat guys that are going out fishing, the residents. Um, everybody's very respectful down there, and there hasn't really been um, much trouble until, you know, if there's a high surf, the Kanapali boats will come over. And the people that are, like, petitioning, are they take pictures and they do videos, and they're very, um, they're mean. <laughs> they're not kind. Um, there's no balance, really, with the conversation. Um, Ed Underwood with uh, Division of Boating is going to be having a meeting with the MALA board, and they're going to be addressing a lot of the issues that are there. And hopefully, you know, through... Um, Ponoponopono, they will be able to come up with an agreement where everybody comes to a place of, of balance and peace and feels heard. Um, that's the goal. Uh, as well as they need to clean that area up. It's very unpresentable and expand the parking. When they started building the, you know, the ferry pier in Lahaina, a lot of the overflow equipment then took up one of the lots that used to be for trailer boats. So there, there's outside circumstances that don't have to do with the few commercial operators that are permitted out of MALA. There's all these outside circumstances that are happening. But the, awesome. the uh, petition, the, the three groups that are petitioning... Tony? I'm, I'm yes. going to have to have you. I'm so sorry. We're we're running out of time. I I know oh, uh, you were okay. held up and a little late. But if you can just uh, kind of share, you know, kind of wrap that up and and share with us uh, real quickly what's happening to sort of resolve the issue. Um, they're meeting. They're just meeting <laughs> with the community. Uh, the the commercial permits have been issued, and they're trying to educate the people that are complaining that they're they're complaining about. Um, the CUPs that are not the problem. 
the problem and the things that they're complaining about are not the people that they're targeting are not the problem. Okay. So and when is that meeting? That needs to take place with the petitioners. So. When is that meeting, Tony? Um, I have no idea because the head of the Mala board is on vacation. Whenever he comes back, um, Ed Underwood's going to be coordinating all of that. Okay. Well, but the thank bathroom you. door's locked now. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> that was the progress. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Lots to fix. Okay, well, we're going to we'll find out more and keep everybody posted. Please let us know when you know. Thank you so much for joining us today, Tony. We deeply appreciate having you on the show and getting the activities update. No, oh, thank you so much, and thank you for all that you do, Pam. I really um, admire all the things that you do in supporting the business here, and you're so articulate. I really um, I admire that. And oh, bless easy. you, as are you, okay. and we admire all that you're doing as well. Thank you. Have a beautiful Maui day. We are now joined by uh, Dave Dunhauer, uh, owner of Lane's Carpet. Uh, Dave is a second-generation flooring installer who started working in the business in his teen years and after continuing in the trade, started his own business. When the opportunity presented itself, Dave, uh, he, excuse me, uh, Dave purchased Lane's Carpet about five years ago from Bill Lane, who started the business in 1974. Aloha and good morning, Dave. Let's... I'm checking in with Gary Artec. I know we had Dave on the line. Dave, Gary? Okay, give me just a moment, folks. I'm going to send Gary a quick text and see where we've, we've got Dave. While we're waiting for Dave to come back on, um, you know, Tony shared a bunch of things about the Destination Management Action Plan, and I know we've talked a little bit about that before. Uh, it's something that I had the pleasure of participating in with, along with many amazing community leaders from all across Maui County. Uh, there were Destination Management Action Plans for each island, and I got to participate in the Maui Island Plan. And so uh, it is a great work in progress to educate people about you know, our culture, our environment, our sustainability efforts, and move tourism positively forward in ways that we've been seeking for a while and help to better manage the industry. I understand uh, I'm getting a new note that Dave is on. So, um, aloha, Dave, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Good morning, Pam. Aloha, good morning. Thank you for joining the show. So I was just telling our listeners that you started out as a teenager uh, working in this industry, continued to learn the trade, and five years ago you bought Lane's Carpet from Bill Lane. Tell us Correct. about that. How has that been? <clears throat> oh, it's been a huge learning curve for me. Like like you said, I start, my dad started off in 1974, um, I started working with him as a teenager, like, you know, most people do with their parents. They end up going to do whatever trade job that that parent might be doing at that time and just realize that I had a knack for it. Um, it was something I really like to do, the satisfaction of completing the job, knowing that it looks 100% different than it did when you got in, knowing the customers are happy with the product you gave them, really gave me that sense of accomplishment every day, which is kind of what I was looking for at that age. Um, and then as I kind of just went through my career as, as my own contractor, I had the opportunity to purchase my dad's business and did so with huge shoes to fill. It's just, it's been a real eye opening experience and really interesting. We've done a lot of, a lot of good work on this island and super happy with the decision I made to take over his company. Well, that is really exciting. I didn't realize it was your dad, given the difference in the last name. So, yeah. Awesome. So uh, I love hearing when we've got generational family businesses where the, the next generation is taking over for the past generation who's ready to move on and retire. So congratulations on that. Can you tell us, we've got a couple of minutes, tell us about the different products you offer and in carpeting and flooring and, and new things in that arena. Yeah, so carpeting is pretty much 
the the way that carpeting is moving nowadays is going to really good stain protection or stain proof carpet what they're having out there right now we sell mohawk brand carpets um, and they've got an ever strand and a smart strand silk and basically they're really really soft carpets they don't feel as plasticky as the ones that were coming in before with the stain stain guard sprayed on top of the carpet um, the, the stain protection is actually built into the fiber and that's one of their their new pushes and it it really works we've seen um, ad campaign for them where they basically had a rhinoceros living in a, a cage for over a month on the <laughs> smart strand silk carpet, and they took it out after a month and power washed it, and it was back to brand new. I'm sure it didn't wow. smell the best, but the color was there. The, the fiber integrity was there. It, it was just amazing. That and is amazing. Also, yeah, um, excuse me. The, we also have LVP with luxury vinyl planks, which are everything on that product is going towards 100% waterproof products. So you're able to put it in your kitchens, your bathrooms, entryways, places you weren't able to put your typical laminate flooring before. So that's pretty exciting. Well, I know you have so many beautiful things to offer our community as they're looking to build a new house or renovate their home. And tell people where they can find you and your showroom. Um, our showroom is at 530 East Oahe Way in Waikapu. Um, we're at the very end of the cul-de-sac, right next to Pacific Source. Everybody knows Pacific Source. Um, so right next door to them, upstairs in our in our building, uh, showrooms up in there. We've got some samples. We don't have a lot of samples. We try to make sure that our selection is wide enough, but not so so wide that you get confused. It's, the products are really really good. We stand by the our products. We, our distributors stand by the product they sell us, and they have so with my dad for a very long time. So we just again stay with a really small. Um, variety of, of foreign types. Well, that's phenomenal. And I know that you folks work with your clients and offer customized services and make sure that you're meeting all of their needs um, with everything done by expert installers. Correct. That's, that's what we aim for. And it's really small family business. You know, we've, we've got a small team of people that we use, and we've been using them for years. So, you know, when you call the office, you'll get pretty much the same person every time. If there happens to be an issue... I'm, I'm here every single day, you know, whenever I need to be. If I have to go someplace on a Saturday or Sunday, that's what we need to do to take care of the customer. Uh, awesome, Dave. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for your tremendous service, making sure you uh, meet all of your customers' needs. That's all the time we have for Business Matters program today, sponsored by Mokulele Airlines. I'm Pamela Tumpop, President of the Maui Chamber of Commerce, wishing you blessings and best wishes for a beautiful Maui day.